Hey guys, I am Caleb Giddings for GAT Daily, and today we are going to talk about why Magnum Force is the best Dirty Harry movie. And this probably won't come as a surprise to some of you guys, but it's because of the revolver shooting. Allow me to explain. So if you haven't seen uh, the Dirty Harry movies, obviously you've got Dirty Harry is the first one. Uh, that's sort of the iconic one. But I think that Magnum Force is actually the best. And it, one, it has to do with the writing. So John Milius was the writer for the first Dirty Harry movie, but uncredited. He was credited as the writer for Magnum Force, which is the second movie. And if the name John Milius sounds familiar to you, that's because he also directed a little movie that we all love called Red Dawn. John Milius is also a big old gun dork. Like, he's a gun nerd on the level that a lot of you people and, well, me, are gun nerds as well. So when he was writing and consulting on Magnum Force, there's no doubt in my mind that he got a really, really good technical consultant for the film. And the film set in the 1970s, which was before the modern era of shooting, before law enforcement agencies and police departments really adopted the modern technique as promulgated by Jeff Cooper. But the gun handling in a couple of scenes is so good. It is so good for the era. Now, there is some, you know, Hollywoody stuff, but the scene that really stands out to me as the one that makes Magnum Force and makes it the best gun movie of the Dirty Harry movies, but also the best Dirty Harry movie is the Hogan's Alley scene. So to set this up, uh, Clint Eastwood is investigating some murders. Turns out the murders have been done by members of the SFPD. Uh, there are all these moto cops and they're all really good shooters. So they're having a department marksmanship competition, which was a thing that police departments used to have. And uh, it ends up, he ends up in a shoot off with the prime suspect for the murders, this blonde guy named Davis. And now we're going to watch Davis's uh, Hogan's Alley run right now. So here we go. He engages his first target successfully and he's moving. All right, moves behind cover. Here's a little bit of a Hollywood silliness where his support hand moves in recoil. But that's okay. You get some of that. This is all actually pretty much how they taught cops to shoot. Get low. Don't shoot the no-shoots. God, look at that guy's forearms. Then he gets low. Nice roll. You know, that's some Hollywood silliness right there. But here's the best part. Perfect reload. This is 100% a textbook reload for how they taught cops to do reloads on their service revolvers back then. It's so good we're going to back this up. Now nah, we're not. But... Yeah, it's just, it's so good. So the reason why they reload like that is because what it allowed you to do when you're using a gun like that, a Colt Python, which is what he had, and Safari Land Comp 2 speed loaders, which are direct injection speed loaders. So they don't require you to immobilize the cylinder. So what they would do is they would grab the loader and they would basically palm it all the way in their hand. And then when they went to do the reload, they would have their fingers actually go past the cylinder and use their hand to drive it in. And that allowed you to create a gross index on the cylinder so that if you had to reload in the dark or something like that, you could still do it without seeing the charge holes. Now he does look his reload into the cylinder because that's what you were taught to do at the time because even back then they understood that the best way to get a very fiddly fine motor skills task like reloading a revolver done was to look at it. But anyway, that's Magnum Force, that's the Hogan's Alley scene, and that's why it's the best of the Dirty Harry movies. I'm Caleb Giddings. Thanks for watching.